I recommend you be at multiple of her classes and not just one. That's just me. You do whatever works best for you. All right, good stuff. And then 3.30 today, we're going to talk about some of the objection handlers for today's marketplace. We'll touch base a little bit on the Zillow stuff as far as objection handlers, just like we did yesterday. And then we'll go over some other stuff as well. So full day. All right, we got a couple minutes here before we get started. Neil's here. Oh, I see, I see Brady just logged on. Well, that's great because now you guys don't have to listen to me much longer. That, that, Brady, I'm telling you, that's the that's that's the key is they, they got to get me off the mic as soon as possible. No, 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 <laughs> not at all. Oh, good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Any other wins before we have our amazing mastermind with Neil and Brady? Any other wins going on out there? Well, I want to say, um, Go ahead, Veronica. I'm very grateful to be a part of this group because before I started to do this, I was struggling to get appointments and now I'm averaging one appointment a week and my numbers are increasing and I feel yeah. more confident that I could tackle any objection that comes my way. Thank you guys very much. Love you guys. That's it for me. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a walk off. I'm done. <laughs> well, look, Veronica, we're, we're happy that you participate. Look at people like Neil, people like me, people like Brady and all these other great people that come on here and talk and stuff like that. We could talk all day, but you have to take action. And so while it's nice that, you know, we get a little bit of a praise like, hey, good job. You get all the praise because you're taking action. That, that's the key. Otherwise, Neil Schwartz is not very smart if you don't actually take action. <laughs> you know, he's just, you know what I mean? So you get all the praise. So good job. That's great. Good work. Good for you. Okay. Good job. Thank you, Robert. Excellent work. You're the, uh, you're the warm up routine, right? Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. <clears throat> warm up the audience. Now it's, like now that. it's time for Jerry Seinfeld to take the stage. <clears throat> I wish. <laughs> I wish. Brady, you can hear us okay? I sure can, Neil. Can you hear me okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. This means a lot to us. I really appreciate it. I've heard such great rave reviews about this talk, and I'm just we're as excited as we can be to, to hear it, to mastermind with you today. Um, I want to double check everything, make sure we are up and running, that we are recording. We are streaming this live on Facebook in 278 countries, or I don't know, maybe it's two countries. <laughs> but <laughs> um, okay, so help me welcome Brady Sandal from Palm Springs, Palm Desert, and all points desert out that way. Uh, representing the luxury market. He's been a guy that, uh, Brady, I don't remember the year I met you. You do it, You were doing a talk and, in uh, Palm Springs, uh, actually uh, one of Mike's superstar retreats. We had you up in the suite. You talked to our group and uh, we've been talking ever since. And we really do appreciate you. Um, in life, we feel that there are examples and there are warnings. And my friend, you are an example. So- uh -huh. Thank you. thank you. Thank you for this. So we're going to go live with Mastermind with Neil Schwartz, our special guest, Brady Sandall. So Brady, uh, thank you very, very much. Let's give him a big hand. Thank you for joining us today. And I wanted to kind of start off with uh, maybe a little Reader's Digest version of the history of your real estate career before we get into the other stuff. Well, Neil, it's a pleasure. You and I have known each other since 2005. So it's been 16 years of wow. great friendship. And you I have an age to bit. Opportunity that I had to meet you. And that, that was in 05. And that was in Palm Desert. And then I had the pleasure of coming in to speak to your ladies and gentlemen 
thereafter and have watched you build the people around you at the level that you have. So congratulations for always showing up as a great leader. And I see Karen is on the screen. Karen, I've known you for a long time and I recognize Jack and Veronica and others. So it's good to see so many familiar faces. Tess, great. So I uh, started like everyone with a story and mine is probably a little different than most because I came from a real estate family uh, always wanting to sell real estate as early age, as the age of five. But then I got my license in 94 and did not sell my first home for 10 years. And that's a trophy and an award that I still hold on to. I don't think anyone can beat that very long runway of time. So if you have taken more 10, than 10 years to sell your first home, I'm happy to send you that trophy, but I still have that trophy on my desk. <laughs> uh, I think it will probably be buried with me. But I only bring that up for one reason, and that is when we're getting into something new, we have a fear that we didn't come from something strong enough to go forward into the future. And whether that's fear or doubt or ego, it really kept me from entering the real estate profession. And I'm hoping that today, whatever fear that's in front of you or whatever lack of confidence you don't have, you can wipe away for one reason. And that is the level of service that we offer the customers we serve will determine the price point that selects us. In other words, if we wanna get into a higher price point or we wanna get into a, a better price point, we have to elevate the level of service. And when I figured that out, which came directly from Mike Ferry in 2004, when I figured that out, I no longer had the fear. In other words, I didn't know anything about the market. I'd never been to the Palm Springs market, and yet I was starting in it. But I knew from my 12 years of experience working at Nordstrom and Microsoft and Starbucks and other big brands, I knew how to serve. And so I took that servant heart and that ability to surprise and delight the consumer and I put that into the real estate field. And from that, we built a business. And today, that business will close about 275 transactions, totaling just over 210 million, led by eight people in production. So we're not building a big cruise ship. We're simply building a mini Ritz-Carlton, a mini Nordstrom, so that when we show up, when the eight of us show up, we're showing up with that big servant leadership and knowledge of the market and the questions that we should be asking. But ladies and gentlemen, luxury is not about where you came from. It's not about who you are or who you are not. It's about the level of service you provide and how you show up for the customers who are going to pay you. So if you have any fear, lean into the fact that all of you work for a servant leader. I'll say two, you and Robert. And all of you know how to show up with your servant hearts. And for that reason, you do belong and should be selling at a higher price point than you are. You deserve it because you can. Thank you, Brady. I appreciate that. I know everybody else does. <clears throat> it's excellent stuff. So um, the talk you wanted to do today, I think that uh, you had done for Mike's Think Big group. So, you know, you want to take off with it. You, where do you, you kind of, this will make this the Brady show today. Oh, okay. Well, Mike asked me to share some words for a particular zone within the Mike Fair organization. And that zone is around thinking big or what I would say thinking bigger, right? And in that conversation, we talked about how we really need to understand the markets that we're in. And notice I use the word markets. See, all of you have been focused on building a farm or a brand or even an empire within your respective market. Call it Irvine, call it Pasadena, call it whatever it is. But in reality, there are three markets you have to master, no pun intended to Century 21 masters, but there are three markets you have to focus on. One is the market that you're already known for. That, that's your bread and butter. 
However, the second market is where that money is coming from. We call that a feeder market. Now, in early COVID, that was probably coming from downtown Los Angeles, very vertical, high dense living, moving to the suburbs. That might have come from San Francisco. That might have come from downtown San Diego. That might have come from downtown Irvine, but that money was coming from somewhere. Well, that's the second market to know is where is that money coming from? That's the feeder market. And the third market to focus on is where will the consumer spend their money next? Now, what we all have to realize is that the data tells us that about 25% of your databases in your market are spending or have recently spent or are going to spend money outside of your primary market. The problem is, ladies and gentlemen, they're not gonna tell you that. They're gonna think like, wow, I'm gonna go spend money in Scottsdale. I'm gonna go spend money in Palm Springs. I'm gonna go spend money in La Quinta. And rather than call you to find me, guess where they go? Zillow. Did you know that 90% of the people buying real estate in the Palm Springs market, 90% are coming from Southern California? How many of you have captured a referral from me? Zero. And yet we're selling 20, 25, 30 homes a month in the market. And those people are coming from Irvine, Redlands, Riverside, Big Bear, Lake Arrowhead, you know, call it Tustin, Ladera Ranch, Costa Mesa, Newport Beach. And yet they're going to Zillow, right? We don't want that. We want them to go to you. So those three markets are the, the market you're in, the market where the money's coming from and where they're going with their money next, the downriver market. So a portion of that conversation, Neil, was understanding that your clients have a real estate monopoly board and that we have to think bigger about that real, real estate monopoly board. In other words, when we're on the phone, it's not about, hey, are you going to sell the home you're in now? But I'm just curious, what other markets are you going to buy into? What other markets are you going to sell out of? What other cities, states, regions, countries are you going to move money around? Because here's why that's important. Money is moving around markets like it's never moved before. Now, frame of reference, you're with Century 21 and we're with a different brand and our brand, not that it's better, but we know the data that in our brand, Keller Williams, just for the state of California, just Keller Williams, just California, and just in the first nine months of the year, 15,000 sellers sold properties in California over a million dollars, 15,000, which means there were 15,000 buyers who bought those properties, which means 15,000 people needed to move. Now, if you're looking at data that's come out this week for the 19th time, that data was put out by the Society for Human Resource Management. And it shows that 48% of the people that filled out the survey, 48% have shared they intend to leave their job within the next two years, 48%. Which means that 48% of your database and mine might be selling their primary residence to make a move. Are you aware of that? Are you excited about that? So it isn't about when you plan on moving this property or how long have you lived at this address, scripts I love with Mike, but we take it to a bigger level. I'm just curious, what does the real estate monopoly board look like? What changes are you making in your career? What states are you going to invest into? Because ladies and gentlemen, California is getting expensive. We have to accept that fact. So by knowing the feeder market of where the money is coming from, your pipeline of buyers, knowing that how that impacts the market that you're in and knowing where the money is going next, you now have three revenue streams. Referrals coming in, transactions in your major market, and referrals going out. The second part of that conversation, Neil, was around 
the fact that brands recognize the math equation that we're all dealing with. You see, when they hire you, Noel or Tyrone or Karen, Donna, when they hire you, they know you're going to get the job done. In fact, you will. And when you close that transaction, there's a 10% chance they'll never come back to you. Why? They've moved out of the state. They've just moved. They're, they're just never coming back. You're amazing. You did a great job. And they're on their way to Florida for tax-free reasons, right? There's a 15% chance they won't come back. Why? Because our job is so easy that now they're licensed, right? Did you know... Robert, you probably did. There are more people signed up to take the license course and exam than there are licenses agents. In other words, more people are getting in the industry than are actually in the industry. Why? Because it's so easy to sell. It's so easy to make money, right? So in that situation, 15% have said, wait a minute, I'm now an agent, my daughter, my friend, I'm just going to help them out. I'm just going to let them have that easy sale. But the larger number is what we call 65%. And that is 65% of the customers may not come back to you because they weren't connected to your brand. And here's how that shows up. Think about over the last 18 months, what was the average number of minutes it took to sell a listing? Was it four? Was it five? Was it nine? What was it? So here's what happened. So I'll pick on Robert because Robert, I like Robert. So they're like, hey, you know, Robert did a great job. Was it Robert or was that Richard? No, it wasn't Richard. He kind of looked like Tom Hanks, I, or was it Tom Cruise? No, I don't think it was Tom. I think his name was Tim. You know, it's Tim because he looks like our nephew, Tim. I'm pretty sure it's Tim. Let me look for Tim. I don't see Tim. Tim must be out of the business. The problem is you got the job done so fast, Robert. They're not even sure who you were. He is attractive, articulate, got us a record price, 17 offers in four minutes, but I think his name is Tim. So that 65% is the number that every brand who represents luxury is trying to defeat. Nordstrom, the Ritz-Carlton, Four Seasons, Century 21, Keller Williams, Compass Sotheby's, Rolex, Mercedes-Benz, Tesla, all these brands are trying to shrink that number down. Why? Because they recognize that we need emotional connection to the brand and retention. So let me put the the floor open for a minute. I want you to either shout out or type in your favorite brands. What are your favorite brands that just make you feel great? You can't wait to wear that brand, spend money at that brand, eat at that brand. I'm looking for some brands. What are the brands? Shop at North Alfa Romeo. Yep, Alfa Romeo, Talbot. Corey Birch. Apple, All State. Deep, All State. Apple. Can I tell you one of the number one brands that was here in California? Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A. Oh, oh yeah, in and out too. In and out. Give me a double double. Hold the onions because I got to present. I can't have onion breath. Hold the onions. But isn't it interesting and somewhat disappointing we didn't name our own brand? Why did we not name our own brand? Why are we not sharing? Oh my God, it's the Neil brand. It's the Century 21 brand. It's the, you know, it's the, it's the Tess brand. It's the Sonia brand. It's, it's Jack's brand. Why are we not naming our own brand? Because here's why. We don't have clarity on all elements of the brand. And here are the three elements of the brand. We know what the brand does. We sell real estate and we know who's going to do it. It's you, the agent, but it gets very cloudy when we talk about how we do it. And that's what makes Nordstrom and the Ritz Carlton 
and Talbot's, Mercedes, Apple, DKNY, Nemus Marcus, that's what makes those brands so good. It's not the steak at Mastro's, because personally, I think it's a little buttery. It's a little heavy on the, on the butter, but it's the presentation of the steak. You know that steak will crackle when they present it at the table. So if you, and when you select Brady Sandal to refer business to, which you can because we're here, we developed a core set of standards called ASPIRE, A-S-P-I-R-E. And I wanna share with you what that means so that when you send clients to us, you know your clients will receive our core standards of excellence called ASPIRE. We know that every brand has the letter A, it's called anticipatory service, where you anticipate what the customer needs and you give it to the customer before they realize they need it. You see, one thing that we know from great leaders like Neil is what we do every day is so repetitive, it becomes painfully boring. Now, Karen always smiles. I've, every time I see Karen, she's always smiling. She's mastered the art of repetitious boredom. But I know Karen. If I said, Karen, go on seven listening appointments today, she'll smile on all seven and she'll be like, good Lord, this is boring. Because it is. But when you anticipate what the customer needs and you give it to the customer before they realize they need it, they're more connected to your brand. Therefore, that 65% number shrinks down. Ritz Carlton is known for this. They know what you need and they give it to you before they realize they need it. Write down one thing that you know your clients need and you should give it to them before they realize they need it. Utility list, moving company list. Maybe it's a massage because they're just exhausted of the process. Or maybe when they're moving into their new home, you've anticipated that they might want something in the refrigerator or they might need things in the, in the restroom, the bathrooms. But you have to anticipate what they need and give it to them before they realize they need it. That's the first letter of Aspire. The second letter S is where we serve. Now, everyone in this call probably knows how to serve. My perception is that you know how to serve, therefore that becomes your reality because my perception becomes your reality. But here's the thing about service. There are two customers you have to serve the internal customer, and those who pay you. We call those the external customers. Now, when I worked for Blake Nordstrom and Nordstrom, the secret to Nordstrom is that everybody believed that the paying customer was most important. The reality is it was the internal customers who are more important. Why? Because when your internal customers are showing up, the paying customer receives the benefit. See, Neil understands that every single one of you is the internal customer. But all of you who lead a team or you lead your family or you lead your friend group or your church group or your recreational group, that's your internal customer. And when you're ready for them, you're ready for those who pay. So anticipate, serve, and P is called perform. When we talk about performance, in our group, we talk about it daily. In other words, we have a daily lineup every day at 845. It's called our daily lineup, our 3G call. We run that play just like Nordstrom, just like the Ritz-Carlton, where we talk about gratitude, goals, and grit. In my hand is the GPS for Brady Sando Real Estate Group, what we need to do over the next 90 days. Now we just crossed over the 60 day mark and here's what it was. 10 listings taken, 10 listings sold, that's per month. And we're on track to exceed that. Why? Because we talk about performance every day. See the trick of our industry is we have these weekly sales meetings, not a criticism, just an observation. When you have a weekly sales meeting, that means you're talking about your goals one day a week and not talking about them six days a week, which means you're talking about it four times a month, but not talking about it 26 times a month. 
Should we be talking about goals four times a month or 26 times a month? Problem is we've fallen in the trap of the sales meeting. And because nobody likes conflict, if we're not hitting the goals, we're like, I'll just deal with that next Tuesday. I'll just deal with that next Tuesday. And then all of a sudden you've gone through 52 Tuesdays and nobody's performed. We've been running a 12 week year for the last six years and we've never missed a beat. So anticipate, serve, perform, I is inspired. This is the fun part for all of you expressives. You're gonna love this section because all we have to do is focus on how we inspire. Now, here's what we do. We wrote a program where we got rid of the closing gift. You know that awkward closing gift that you usually have to give at the end of the transaction where like they've given you 30,000 and you're trying to find a bottle of wine that justifies a $30,000 commission check. And then gentlemen, you're trying to figure out how to wrap the present because we don't know how to wrap. And ladies, you know that you like presents because you like to unwrap them. That's why you buy things at Tiffany's. I mean, the diamonds aren't that much better, but boy, is that turquoise box better. So here's how we inspire. And here's how I want you to inspire. Look for the cues and the clues from your customer. In other words, we were walking into a house that we had listed, Neil, and the clients, it was August and it was 124 degrees. Now, I don't care if it's a dry heat or not, it's still 124. And the sellers are walking out and they're tired and they've got three black labs and they're shoving them in the F-150 so we can show their house. This is a very modest $600,000 house. But I recognize that they were tired. So I have the concierge come over and give them two protein drinks and three protein treats for their dogs and a note card. And it says, we recognize that you're tired. We want you to know that we aren't tired. We're going to find the buyer and we're going to get you across the finish line. Within two hours, they gave us a couple referrals and near in the last year and a half, almost $200,000 in gross commission income either from their transaction or all the referrals they've given. That $35 protein box has led to nearly 200,000. Why? Because we inspired them. So here's your homework assignment. Write down the names of three people who you need to inspire today. And for all of you under the age of 35, that is not done through a text message. See, when you pick up your phone, whether it's an Android or an Apple, there's a button that looks like a phone. And when you press the button and you press the keypad, it actually will ring. And the other person will pick it up and they'll hopefully answer and not send you to voicemail. And you're just going to let them know that you're thinking about them and that they need something to you. Because here's why I'm going to tell you that. COVID is a problem. Mental illness is a bigger problem and the media won't talk about it. So I'm gonna talk about it. People are choosing suicide over success. Neil, I was given a presentation in Arizona on my birthday, October 1st. I was turning 51 and I flew over to Phoenix and I was giving a presentation at the end of the presentation for the young- Happy birthday, Brady. What's that? Happy birthday, Brady. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so it's for the Young Professional Network, and a young man walks up to me, and he has his head down, and he says, may I speak to you for a moment? I said, yes. He says, I loved your presentation today. It really made an impact. Well, thank you. He says, I lost my father on Tuesday to a heart attack, and I was planning to kill myself tonight. You stopped it. Wow. Wow. I'm not going to take that credit because that's not my responsibility, but it's our responsibility to look for people who need to be inspired. And ladies and gentlemen, you might be one of those individuals who needs to be inspired. And here's why. Did you realize that real estate is the only segment in the U.S. economy that's winning at the level it's winning? And did you realize that every time you sell a house, you're keeping on average 21 people in your market employed. Did you realize that? 
Or are you too busy about, wow, my client got their home sold in 17 minutes because I'm so great. I'm the top agent. We're the top team in the desert two years in a row, but we don't talk about that. What we say is when you select us to represent you, you're also keeping your economy moving forward. And every day, Neil, someone calls me and says, well, I'm going to select you because you're the guy, you're the group that's keeping the economy moving forward. Their perception becomes my reality. So go find those three people that you need to inspire. And by the way, you can be one of those three. There's nothing wrong with self-care. Nothing wrong with self-care. So anticipate, serve, perform, inspire. R is respond. Final two letters respond. We know what that means. You've got to show up for the people that need you. Remember that whatever your clients need from you, here's the formula. It's quick to get. It's easy to receive and it's beautifully finished. That could be that your phone number is easy to get. It could be that the listing presentation is easy to get. It might be that it's beautifully packaged, but easy to get, quick to receive and beautifully finished. That's what consumers want. And finally, E is you want to make sure that you're exceeding your own potential. It's not about the customer. It's about you showing up to be the best Gustavo, the best Tim, the best Sherry, the best Veronica that you can be. It's about outworking your own potential, exceeding your own potential. Right here, the meaning of life is to find your gift and the purpose of life is to give it away. I spent 50 years to find the meaning, which is to learn how to sell. Now I'm just giving it away. My team members will make more money than I will. The foundation that we're creating to give back to the charities, they'll receive more money than I'll make. It's fine. But that's the purpose. Because, you know, it's not that exciting to just sell a lot of homes. Remember, the purpose of business is to fund your life. That's the purpose of business. And we should never lose sight of that. Questions from the team. Okay, whoa, really good stuff. I'm still taking notes. Nothing screams luxury than a Celsius aluminum. I mean, there's nothing more glamorous than this. So here we go. I thought it was Evian, no? Neil, did I miss one? Um, sorry, Neil, Brady, did, uh, what about the E? What does the E stand for? E is exceed your own oh, potential. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. So those are the DNA points of what we call our brand standards. So when a client asks us what makes us different, we talk about our ability to know the three markets, feeder markets, downriver markets, primary markets. And we talk about not the what we do, not who we are, but how we do it. That's Aspire. Aspire is how we do what we do. That's designed to get the 65% number down so that when customers look to us, they know how they're going to be served. Excellent stuff. Brady, let me ask you a question here. Um, so. So you've got an agent, they, you know, 10, 12 transactions a year. Um, I mean, to move into the luxury market, to move their price point up, can you give me two or three points that, you know, maybe over the next 60 days that somebody on, on this call can, uh, can take and put into action that would sure. help them? So here's what we know about lower price point. It's very transactional and the leads typically come up through a transaction. You're buying the lead, you've bought the lead, you've farmed for the lead. It's very transactional. In a higher price point, it's transformational, typically given through relationship. In other words, when you've given, when you've found one person who's at a higher price point, and you give the best Nordstrom experience, service, 
that you can give, that person is more likely to refer you to someone else they know at that level. Now, here's what we know. We will close 275 transactions this year, and there are only eight of us, eight in sales and eight who support those who sell. Our number one lead source is referral are from consumers. Our number two lead source is referral from agents. Every day, our group in Palm Springs receives four referrals a day. And our number three lead source, center of influence, people that we know but we've never represented and aren't in real estate. Those are the top three lead sources. Here's how this game works, Neil. A client called me last March. I had met her one time. She's like, I've heard you provide the best service. And I'm now after 10 years ready to make a move. Okay. Shown her one house that she bought for 3.6 million. And she, we double ended that transaction. She referred me to the buyer that bought next door. That client, we sold their home for 1.3 and she bought a more expensive home. And she referred me to the neighbor, her best friend, who sold at 1.35, who bought at 1.6. All based on one relationship. No Zillow, no farming, no strategic follow up campaign. No pumpkins at the doorstep. This was March, so no leprechauns at the, at the doorstep. This is about answering the question, if I'm standing in my listing at the front door, how would the Ritz-Carlton greet their next guest? If I'm at the front door of Nordstrom, how would Nordstrom greet the next customer? I guarantee you they're not on their fanny on the sofa going through Instagram or Tinder or Bumble. They're literally at the desk, greeting them, welcoming them in. I'm just curious, what brought you in to take a look at this property today? What's the one feature you're most excited to see? And when you have that feature, what will that feature do for you? And do you like this feature enough to write an offer today? But yet yeah, here we are. Oh, and here's the kitchen. Oh, and here's the toilet. This is where you're going to go poo-poo and pee-pee. If they can't figure that out, they're probably not worthy of buying a house. Notice I'm smiling. Notice I'm smiling. So, so Brady, okay, I, I get that. But how do we, how are we going to get the lead? Where's the lead going to come from? Do they need to? Preview property, God forbid the P word. Preview. Well, here's the, here's the thing. Think about where consumers who want to spend money on a higher price point are hanging out. They're obviously going to hang out in higher price neighborhoods. Look to see who can you hold open? What property can you hold open? That's option number one. Option number two, where do consumers spend their time? Montage Laguna Beach and the restaurant and the bar. Go hang out, go network. They'd hang out at country clubs. It doesn't mean you're spending money to get in that room, but you can get in that room. Go online and do Google searches around theater and sports and travel. Strike up a conversation. And what I did and what I still do every day is I call people I know. Now, Neil, close your ears on this one because you're not going to like this. In 16 years of selling over 1,200 homes, I've never made one cold call. Never made, I've never called an expired. I've never called a FISBO. Now, what I have done is I've called the people around the expired listing to find out what's going on with Betty Lou Bickbick. And then I've called Betty and said, hey, Betty, Neil, your neighbor down the street suggested I call you because Neil knows how I sell properties for people like you. Neil said I should get together with you. She's like, I like Neil, therefore I like you. Come on over. So it just starts with the who. See, every single one of us, 
When we're not achieving the goal we want, whether it's the first transaction or the 100th, we're typically missing a who, either an internal who, or to Neil's point, an external, which is the customer. Go find somebody who's used to paying for service. Remember, luxury used to be a price point. It's now an experience. So, so Brady, I'm, I'm paraphrasing what I think is in their heads. Is but but you you have the gift of gab. You're you're interesting. You oh you, Neil, I am the most boring person on the call. Well, I have the gift of gab. I have the ability to ask enough questions because the number oh, question. the number and level of questions that I ask will determine if and when I get paid. That was my opening point. When we start talking too much, well, the, who, I, I am not that interesting. If you looked at my life, you'd be like, oh my God, that is so boring. I think it's fantastic. Why? Because I don't have to share anything. I just get to ask. And what do people love? They live to talk about themselves. Here's the thing about my career, Neil, and this will prove the point. My average listing appointment, you know what the time is for that? I have no idea. 14 minutes. Huh. That's my average. Why? Because my pre-qualification could be 40 to 45. I'm going to ask them every question that I need to ask them. So when I show up, all we're doing is signing the contract. I'm not getting hundred percent of the time, but those 14 minutes, I don't want to talk about the kitchen. Right. I'm interested in what they're doing for the weekend. And believe me, I don't do enough on the weekend for it to be interesting to talk about. But by asking the right questions, and here's the recipe, it's called the four C's. It's very simple. You wanna follow this. The first C is care. The first C is always care. So here's what it sounds like. Karen, it's Brady. I was driving down the 91 freeway and your smile came across my mind. How are you? That's the first C. The second C is curiosity. Karen, I'm curious, are you still working from home? Or are you back in the office? Or I'm just curious, how are the kids? Are they dealing okay with the mask issue? Are they like, are they stressed out? Now, at some point, Karen's like, oh my God, Brady, how's the market? Well, Karen, I'm so glad you asked. What have you noticed? Take her temperature. Don't tell her that you're so busy. I'm so busy. I'm so busy. Don't give me any money because I'm, I don't want any more money. I'm busy. Take the question. I mean, Karen, what's going on in the market? What are you noticing? And then the third C is consult. Now I grew up Catholic, which means we like to preach, but you're going to deliver the consultant in the form of a question. So Karen, would it surprise you to learn that there are about four buyers bidding on every property out there? Would it su surprise you to learn that buyers are having to pay 2% more than what the sellers are asking? Karen, would it surprise you to learn that buyers today can get twice as much house for the same monthly cost because interest rates are so low? So we deliver data in the form of a question and Mike Ferry is the expert at this. And then that fourth C is we close them. Now be careful because here's how most people close. Hey, Karen, just call me when you think of somebody. Just don't tell me now, Karen. But when you think of somebody, just call me. Don't, don't tell me now. God forbid. No, Karen, don't tell me now. Don't, don't tell me now. Versus, Karen, who do you know on your street that would love to get the highest offer they've ever thought of? Karen, who in your office is the greediest person you work with? Who on your street hates living in Redlands and wants to move to Palm Springs, right? You ask the question to close. You close them by asking for the business. So care, curiosity, consult, and close. That is on my monitor because if I'm talking too much, and I'm doing a lot of talking now, I'm going to be exhausted in about four minutes. I'm talking so much, but when you're, when you're asking questions, it's like a dream job. We had a client yesterday close and she called and actually she didn't call. They emailed and they said, oh my God, 
the service is better with you than it was at the Four Seasons. And then they said, and I know nothing about you. And I'm like, and you never will, nor do you need to. But who do you know that wants to join you in Palm Springs? And you know what? He gave me a list of four people with their phone numbers. And all of you servant leaders, all of you big people like Cindy, who's rubbing her eyes because she can't believe she's had to sit through this call as long as it is. All of you servant leaders, I'm just teasing her. All of you servant leaders, remember that when you're serving, look for the cues and the clues. So I'm going to pick on Noel for a second. Noel, would you come off mute for a moment? Okay, I'm with you. Noelle, I absolutely love your hair. Thank you. Yeah, see, Noelle knows to smile and say thank you. Nothing wrong with that. Now, most ladies would be like, oh, this? I, I haven't, like, it's long. I, in fact, I didn't even shower today. I just even, I didn't, like, I'm, you, you're so good at discounting, like, you're just great at discounting compliments. It's fascinating. So here's the gift that I would want to, to coach <laughs> To. So she would say something like this. Well, thank you. Would you like me to connect you with my stylist or who else do you know who'd like to have a haircut like this? Because when we do something well for our customers and they call in, here's our script. You know, Noel, it was our pleasure to deliver those photos of your home. Who else on your street would like to have photos of their home? But we're so busy, what we say is, oh, no problem. It was no problem. No problem, no problem, no problem. Well, you know it was a problem because they just said it 45 times that there was no problem. It was a huge problem and they never wanna hear from you again. <laughs> now, when you say my pleasure, that's like, that's getting better, right? My pleasure, unless you say like, oh God, my pleasure. Like, please don't call me again versus who do you know who would like to have photos of their home so they can too take advantage of the market we're in? They'll tell you. Remember, people are looking for ways to spend money. And when they recognize great service providers, they're going to refer you to the other people who wanna spend money with you. So don't discount the compliments, ladies. If someone says, I love your glasses, great. Can I connect you with my stylist? And gentlemen, pay attention, gentlemen. The presentation is more important than the present. That's why ladies love Tiffany's because it's all about the Tiffany blue box and the Tiffany blue bag. So don't try to wrap things in comic paper or brown paper bags. Don't do that. Or don't try to put a, ribbon on top of a wine bottle, that's not going to work. All right, questions. How many people are included in keeping the economy moving forward? About 21. The data suggests that every time a home sells, there are about 21 people. You, your assistant, escrow, title, lender, appraiser, contractor, mover, cleaner, all those people. My issue is finding or buying the lead. Don't buy the lead. We don't buy any leads. We provide exceptional service, which allows us to generate leads. Uh, do you recommend a lead finding group? Yes, I recommend that you go find leads. That's my lead finding group. Like you just become your own lead finding group. Even if Neil doesn't want you to say they told you they might want to sell, hmm. try to understand the question. Even if Neil doesn't want you to say they told you they might want to sell. Oh. Yes, my, I will still call them. And if Neil says, hey, don't tell them, and that, that was an expired listing, I'm not going to say oh, that Neil told me that you're desperado and that you're downsizing. But I will say, you know, it's a funny thing. I was just on a conversation with one of your neighbors, and they naturally said that I was the next agent you should interview. So I'm calling you. Can I interview at two or is four o'clock better? Naturally. 
All right, other questions so we can avoid lead generation because I know that's why we're here. We're avoiding lead generation. So let's make sure we keep avoiding it, right, Neil? Exactly. Thank yeah. you, Katie. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm an agent too. You can't, you can't avoid that. Okay, Veronica. Veronica, go ahead. You mentioned that you don't typically like giving closing gifts at a closing. So mm -hmm. I know you said you'll find, you know, if they feel tired, give them a little encouragement. But at, at closing, what do you do? Oh, let me tell you, we do call our defining moment campaign where we purposely give them something up to eight times in a transaction. So you recognize that the RPA has the defining moments built in. So the time that they meet you, the time that they interview you, the time that they sign the contract, the time they photograph the home, the activation of the listing, those are all defining moments. So what we do, Veronica, is for example, at the end of the photo shoot, which is defining moment number four, we leave a beautiful bag. I mean, this thing is gorgeous. And we leave it on the kitchen island. And Tess, it's got all this tissue paper, probably taller than Tess. It's like nine, it's like nine feet tall of tissue paper. And the ladies unwrap the tissue paper and they find a beautiful candle and there's a card and it, and the card simply reads this. Veronica, while we're looking for your buyer, please enjoy the fragrance of the candle. We anticipate finding the buyer before the wick burns out. Now, Veronica just smiled. So she calls and she's like, oh my God, that is so cute. I love the candle. Veronica, it was our pleasure to share the fragrance with you. Who else on your street would like to enjoy a candle? Who else wants photos? Do you have someone specifically that drops them off? Oh yeah, it's not me. I don't like to give gifts and I'm not good at receiving them. That's the thing. Like, I don't know how to wrap. I cannot figure out how to wrap or I don't know where to buy a stamp. I don't even know how much stamps are. I don't even know if you can use stamps. I have no idea what's going on. But my point of that is that we have Annie. Annie is our concierge and she's the tooth fairy and she surprises and delights. Here's a quick story. So Neil, you'll love this. We have a transaction coordinator and she's at the time was 68 or 69 and a client called Veronica and says, hey, we love your, your team, your team is amazing. And your transaction coordinator is really, really good. Um, we're going to send her to London for a couple of weeks. Now I'm not good on geography. So I'm thinking like London, California, like that's probably near Sacramento. It's like Fresno. I'm not sure, but they're like, no, we're sending her to London, England. We've rented a castle for her. Now this hey. 750,000. So I'm thinking if they're sending my transaction coordinator to London, I must be going to like Bali. I got nothing out of that deal. Nothing, zero goose egg. So the funny thing is they said we're sending her first class. Okay, so she sends, she's never been off North America and she's never flown first class and now they're flying her. She's great at what she does. That's, you know, you're winning Veronica when the clients are giving you gifts. And you know you're really winning when they're giving your assistants the gift. Because when they're giving your assistants the gifts at closing, you're winning. You're winning. Pretty awesome. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Brady, other questions for Brady. What other fun things do you do to surprise the client and make them feel special? It varies. I mean, most of the time we absolutely love our clients. There are moments when we give a fond farewell and it's so fun. We hope they never call us again. Kidding, kidding, just had to, right. No, but it might be something like um, chocolate covered strawberries. It might be a book because our, our ladies and gentlemen, our staff is trained by the Ritz Carlton every year. So we might give them the Ritz Carlton, the new gold standard. We might give them the book called The One Thing. We might give them cookies, right? But, but the point of that, it's not about the gift. Make sure that you know it's about the card. It's about the presentation. So the reason why the note card for the candle is while we're looking for your buyer, that goes back, Karen, to the anticipatory service. Tell them what you're going to do. While we're looking for the buyer, 
you focus on that darn candle. You focus on the candle, we'll focus on the buyer. Beautiful, thank um, you so much. Oh, I have a quick question. I, okay. Sure, Mia. Hi, Brady. Um, you mentioned in the beginning that you uh, come from a family of realtors. I do as well, and that you knew at five years old. I just turned 20 and I got my license. So I was just wondering if you have any advice for, uh, like, quick advice for upcoming realtors uh, who are just starting out. Yeah. First of all, I love that you're just starting out, and I love that you're 20, and I love that you're showing up for the call, and you literally have one of the best guys coaching you in the world. So you're at the right place. Who is that? That's you, Neil. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and awesome. and your, your younger version, Robert. Who Robert, I guess, is now like 28 years old or something ridiculous like that. Let's go with that. Let's go with that. Yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> so um, uh, Mia, here's my, here's, my, here's my answer to your question. This is the absolute best gift that Mike Ferry ever gave to me. It's called the plan, P-L-A-N. And you just have to follow these four simple steps. And whenever you're too far away from your goal, you've moved too far away from these very four steps. P stands for prospecting and L stands for lead follow-up. And every day you have to do some type of prospecting and some type of lead follow-up. Now here's the trick, Mia. Everybody is scared of prospecting, and yet that's not where the money is. It starts from that exercise, but the money's in the lead follow-up. If you can accept the fact that the fear of prospecting on the other side is the revenue from lead follow-up, you're going to win your game. And then when you prospect and you do lead follow-up every day, you're given the right. Let me say that again. You're given the right to finish A and N. A is appointments, N is negotiate. Now, ideally, your morning schedule is prospect and lead follow-up so that in the afternoon, you have the right to go on appointments and negotiate contracts. But here's what happens when it works and it doesn't work. When it doesn't work, here's what happens, Mia. You don't prospect and you don't lead follow-up. So the appointment becomes your hair appointment, your nail appointment, your shopping appointment, and your negotiation is all the negative self-talk about how you're going to do it tomorrow. You're going to negotiate yourself like, darn it, I'm going to do this tomorrow. When you're winning and you're prospecting, you're doing lead follow-up, the appointments are income-producing appointments, and the negotiation is people who are going to pay you. The choice is up to you. Plain and awesome. Simple. Thank you so much. Thank you so, yeah. so much. The agents on our team who follow our basic lineup who role play every day for 30 minutes because we practice on our peers, not on the people who pay us. They're all making over $300,000 a year. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, they're on a 50-50 split. So all of you little 90-10, 80-20 riff-raff negotiation, stop it. Your brokerage needs to make money because when you do, they should too. So make sure that you're not thinking of yourself as a 90-10 or an 80-20. You're thinking of yourself as $100,000 a year, 250, 350, 4, 550, or a million. Stop it with the split talk. Now I can say that because I have no ownership of you. But as an industry, the moment you start talking about, well, I want a 90-10. Yeah, well, you know what I want? I want to make a million dollars. How we get there? is through the plan. Now, again, raised Catholic, I'll back away from preaching. No, it's okay, keep going. There you go. Yeah, yes, yes, say that, say that a couple more times. I'm, I, you know, it just, I sat down with someone the other day. <clears throat> he wants to apply for the job and he's like, I want a 90-10. I said, 90-10 of what? He's like, I'm a 90-10. I'm like, so 90% of you showed up? Do you just want 10% of me to show up? Because if you only want 10% of me, we're done. Like, I'm not interested in showing up for the people that I lead at 10%. He's like, well, how can you charge 50-50? And I said, because I give 100% value and 50% I give back in sharing revenue. 
Like when you are asking the conversation around splits, you've lost focus on the goal. And I will defend that as the day is long. By the way, Sunday, we get an extra hour. How many of you, like, it was so hard to get in the office at seven o'clock this morning because it was still black. It was still like black sky. I mean, it was like dark. I need, I, I need daylight. Let's go. I need daylight here. Let's go. Bring on Sunday. So, um, Brady, everyone, Neil. let's unmute yourselves. Unmute yourselves. Let's give him a giant hand. Thank you, Brady. Thank Brady. You. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. One of the things that we do right now is we'll take a few minutes and kind of go around the group and ask them what they learned. You're welcome mm -hmm. to stay and, and hang with us. Uh, this has been fantastic. That's amazing. Um, it's something that we have to all digest and work on. But thank you, thank you, thank you. So uh, are you going to hang around and listen to what they learned? Yeah, I mean, you have me on call till nine o'clock tonight, Neil. So this is like, we're just getting started, my friend. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. So again, thank you, Brady, very, very much. Talk to me. Tell me what you guys learned today. So Neil, um, I just wanted to go through and understand the Aspire because I... I, I, I love it. I wanted to make sure I didn't miss the points. It's just um, like anticipating their service, anticipating what they need, serving is S, and then P is performance. Mm -hmm. I is inspire. Mm -hmm. And inspire, um, the, I, can you e. say inspire the yeah, client? You, you, you to want to inspire those around you, right? Inspire. You, Job is to think about how would Nordstrom inspire their customer? How would the Four Seasons or Montage or Mastro's or Neiman Marcus, how would those brands run an open house? How would those brands deliver a listing presentation? How would those brands show up to show property? Okay. Okay, good. And then, okay, I get it. So then, um, and then responding, um, need, it, uh, needs from quick, easy to receive. Yeah, here's the thing about respond. So on that note, um, we have to accept the fact that we're all physically tired. One thing that you don't know about me is I'm in production and I personally will sell about 85 million this year. I travel four and a half days a week. I'm not in Palm Springs. Next week, I'm in Napa on Monday. Tuesday, I'm in San Antonio. Wednesday, I'm in Sea Island, Georgia. Thursday, I leave there and go to Salt Lake, and then I come back Friday. That's a normal week. That's a normal week for me. And yet I can personally sell through leverage. So respond is that you may not be able to work seven days a week. Mm -hmm. Systems that you put in place should so that the systems can respond. Now, remember, when you recognize that what we do is highly repetitive, it's an assembly line. Mm -hmm. And you can reduce the number of calls that they're calling because they're looking for things you should have given to them before they realize they need it. Right. And whatever they do have to find is easy for them to get quick to receive and beautifully finished. Mm -hmm. I to the brand. Here's an easy solution. If someone sends me an email and all they say is, you know, award winning team, and I don't know where they are, and I don't have a way to find their number, and I can't click on their number, I'm not going to call them. Right. Simple. Too busy. So make it easy. Make it in your auto signature where they literally can click on your phone number and call you back. Mm. Tell them how to find you. What city are you in? What state? Mm -hmm. I hate it when people say, hi, this is so-and-so from the coast. What coast? The Washington coast? The, the Southern California coast, the, the New England coast, the Miami. The Amalfi coast, of course. Right, what, what, yeah, I mean, like, hello. Okay, and then the last one would be the E, and that's exceeding my own potential. That's right. The trick on that, the trick on that 
is Valerie that we put a lot of focus on the consumer experience Mm -hmm. and that's, that's good, but that's requires motivation. When you have a lifestyle like Neil and you have the energy of Karen and you focus on discipline rather than motivation, discipline will carry you through the days that are harder than others. Mm-hmm. Not a motivated person. I'm not. Like if I had my choice for motivation, I'd be on the couch right now. now <laughs> I'm not saying that because I don't want to be here. But my point is I don't need a lot of motivation to do what I do. I don't need a lot of energy to do what I do it. But I'm highly disciplined. Mm-hmm. To be traveling, and I present three to four hours a day, four and a half, five days a week, three weeks a month. And I've done 12 years or 12, 12 months. I'm not, I'm disciplined though. But you're presenting and you're not even around. No. And the clients are like, the lecture clients like, oh my God, I love your life. You get to travel everywhere. Would you sell my home? Listen to what they just said. They didn't say glue your ass to my house. No, no. They said, I love your life. I love how you get to travel and would you sell my home? Yeah, because they recognize that it's the standard that will sell the home. It's the people. It's eight in sales and eight support those who sell. Okay, I'm getting it. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you. This was awesome. Good question. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Valerie. you. Um, other, what else did we learn today from Brady? What else? Um, hi, this is Tiffany. Brady, thank you so much. You're really good. Uh, I appreciate you spending time with us. Uh, quick questions. You said you're very disciplined, uh, mm-hmm. but you're not motivated. I, I thought to be disciplined, you have to be motivated. Could you expand on the discipline part? How, how do you get to be so disciplined? Yeah, so this is my personal opinion. I swam competitively for 12 years and had an Olympic coach. I didn't go to the Olympics, but I had an Olympic coach. And here's what he said. You're going to start at one end of the pool and you're going to swim to the other end. And when you get there, turn around and swim back. And you're going to do that for four hours a day, six days a week for 11 years. That doesn't take motivation. That takes discipline. To, To stare at the bottom of a pool for four hours a day is not a very social activity. Like you're going to drown if you try that. Here's my thing. When I study people that are very successful, some are motivating and some are motivational, but generally speaking, they're not motivated. And I'll tell you why. Because they put their energy into discipline. For example, I had to get up at six o'clock this morning. I wasn't motivated to get up, but I'm disciplined to get up because I had to be on camera by 7 a.m. Well, I'm not motivated to go find a listing. I mean, how, ex- how boring is that, by the way? I mean, honestly, you know how this plays out. They call in and say, I've got a brand new house with a brand new kitchen, brand new landscaping, brand new bathrooms, brand new systems, and you show up. All that was put back in 1994, but in the seller's mind, it's brand new. You know, that's what happens, right? So you show up with your comps all brand new and you're like, oh my God, this is not brand new. Well, when you're disciplined, you don't need to use any energy. So let me ask you a question and Neil, this will go slightly against Mike's opinion, slightly, but I'll ask the question. What's most important to you? Mindset, skill set, or activities? Put it in the chat. What do you think? To me? Anyone in general. Well, for me, it's the activities because even if I don't have the mindset, when the body's in motion, the mind will follow. So ladies and gentlemen, if you've not listened to anything on that call, I want to give Neil a shout out. I have asked that question of thousands of people, thousands, thousands. Neil's the only one who got it right. You see, Brady, I'm not just another pretty face. I know. You are (laughs) 
one of two, Robert and you. I mean, the two of you are just disgustingly handsome. Neil's right, ladies and gentlemen. You want to fall in love with the discipline of doing activities. Because when you do activities and you're disciplined to do them, your skills will get stronger as will your mindset. Problem is we focus on mindset. Oh my God, my mindset, my mindset. Well, you're on the couch. Get off the couch. Get off the couch. I mean, let's, let's be honest. If you're, if you're trying to earn money, you can't go and chase and say, oh my God, I'm so motivated. Would you give me a loan? I mean, I'm motivated. No, no, no. The activities develop the skills which allow you to make money. Now, if you're going to be motivated, be motivated to go spend the money you make. Go buy another house. Go invest in your favorite charity. But discipline, fall in love with discipline. It's so much easier. It's so much easier. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Tiffany. Brady, this is Reva. Hi there. I think it was exactly what, hi. It was, I think it was exactly right. It, it, I think it was providential what you said, because I was listening to Mel Robbins this morning. Neil's been talking about it. You're talking about it. You know, when your life is boring and you build on the habits to meet your goals, then whether you feel like it or not, you do those activities, you're going to meet with success. Yes. And I, I just want to thank you because you just, you know, hit a home run on that one and just reaffirmed it to me that I just need to show up and do my job. Yes. Perfect. This is the book to read Atomic Habits. This is your book to read. And here's the one sentence why you want to read Atomic Habits by James Clear. Please, everyone read the book. Because the book identifies one thing and it says tiny changes remarkable results. And here's why that's important. We're not going to rise up to the level of our goals or our motivation. We're not going to rise up to that. We're going to fall down to, back down to the level of our systems and our habits and our activities. You can be as motivated as you want, but if you're not doing the activities, you're never going to get there. Notice I'm smiling because people don't like conflict. So I'm smiling. All right, good stuff. Uh, what else did we learn today? So I, uh, Brady, I can't thank you enough. This is the most notes I've taken in, in quite a while. So I really appreciate it. My first question is, are you looking for any more TCs? Um, <laughs> Cause I want to go to London. Oh, I know. Can you believe, <laughs> can you believe that? Oh, that's amazing. I mean, she sent me a picture, Robert, you love it. She sends, she's never been in first class. If you've flown first class, they give you a washcloth. She sends me a photo. She's like, what do I do with this? I'm like, well, don't use it in the bathroom. <laughs> Just to wash your face before they serve you. Well, I mean, she's like, they're bringing me pajamas. Yeah, because it's an 11 hour flight. She's like, the seats recline. Yeah, better than Southwest. Yeah, a little bit better. By the way, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, but I, I want to go back. You said a, a lot of really good stuff today, but I, I want to go back to the actual very, very beginning, because I think this is a key thing for agents to understand is you said you have the trophy for 10 years before you sold your first home, right? You're having yeah. some fun with that. Yeah. And it's a reminder to everybody that it takes time to make a lot of money. And I think what we, I make this joke a lot, Brady, that I think a lot of people feel that, you know, Neil Weichel just mails listing contracts to his farm. They sign them and send them back. And that's just the way it's always been done. But it, it takes time to be Brady Sandall, the top real estate agent in the Coachella Valley. And I think this is just a great reminder that it takes time and you don't have to come from luxury to be able to do luxury. Well, that's just, true. It's, that, such, that it's is such a key true. reminder for people. They want the million dollars tomorrow. And if they don't get it tomorrow, well, then that doesn't work. I'll try the next thing. Yeah. And, and, and I don't, I'm not going to take away from that because that's true. And I think the value add to this, Robert, is I made millions in the first 12 years of corporate America. Mm -hmm. Literally, I went, I worked uh, at a high level for Nordstrom 
Microsoft, I worked for Bill Gates as a recruiter when there were only 19 of us. I helped open up University of Phoenix. I took them through an IPO. And Neil, I sold all my stock the day before 9-11. Wow. Wow. Good for you. I mean, millions were saved from that decision. Robert, the point of that is not to impress you what I did in corporate America, but that entire time I wanted to sell real estate. And yet I was too fearful to move forward. Mm. I was vice president of a venture capital firm. And yet, oh my God, would I, would I ever want to ask them to have them list their home with me? Oh my God. But that's, that's like definition of insanity. And as Mike would say, stupido, stupado. <laughs> Point of that is there is something in every single one of you right now that is ready to lunge forward. And yet something's holding you back. Do not do what I did for 10 years. I'm happy I worked for corporate America, but think about how life could have been had I just shown up to that authentic self in 1994. Remember, I'm the kid at age five that would go to McDonald's and buy Happy Meals, and I would build planned developments with cheeseburgers and French fries. The food's not very good there, but the cheeseburgers are perfect. I mean, you can do cul-de-sacs with cheeseburgers and French fries, like there's no tomorrow. And it's pretty cheap food if you think about it. I mean, you can buy like 45 Happy Meals for like $19 or something dumb like that. But my point of that story, Robert, is, yeah, it, I'm not an overnight person. But the larger headline is I avoided my passion. I wasted 10 years. I knew my gift was to elevate. But don't, don't wait 10 years. Don't, don't let me give you that trophy. Let's give you another trophy. All right. This has been absolutely fantastic. We're way over time. It's been worth it. Big time. Brady, I'd like to keep the door open. We'd, I think yeah. I'd maybe have you back at a different time. Yeah. Very, very inspiring. Very good. Everyone unmute yourselves, please. Unmute yourselves. Let's give them a big hand. Woo! Thank you, Brady. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Phone numbers in the chat, websites in the chat. Stay in touch. Think of us uh, for your referrals. We'll think of you. Ladies and gentlemen, as I mentioned earlier, mental wellness is important. Take care of yourself and those around you. And remember, we're human. And we deserve all the best. Be well. Hello, my love. All right, you guys. Fantastic. Great job. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. That was amazing. Cool. Very good stuff.